Hello, this is Rodney and welcome to Songs for the Soul. I know you're used to having Angie here with us. Um, uh, I will say that we have a special guest and he doesn't look anything like Angie. Um, Close. But, but he is beautiful in the eyes of the Lord. <laughs> will you welcome our founder? He is the reason why we are, there is a Songs for the Soul. Will you help me welcome Rick Reynolds to Songs for the Soul. Woo -hoo! Thank you, Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot um, believe that um, your brainchild, here we are in season two. Yeah, I would have never dreamed I'd be on a Songs for the Soul back in the early 2000s, like 2003, 2004, when I felt the Lord saying, do this. <laughs> I mean, this would be totally not anything I could have conceived of. <laughs> uh, it's 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 beyond me and us uh, as well, you know. I cannot go without saying. I know you hear this all the time, but I just want to um, uh, go on record with our songs for the soul audience here um, to know um, how much you mean to me and Angie, and then to our baby boy Josiah. And, um, uh, I mean, we are um, uh, just three voices in a crowd of hundreds and thousands um, of, of others that can really, really walk in healing and hope um, because of what the Lord is doing, has done, and is doing through you and your life. I mean, in our eyes, I know you don't look at yourself this way, but in our eyes, you're a legend. And with yeah. this, it's, it is incredible. Incredible. Well, just like for you, I mean... Had it not been for the Lord. Amen. And so it doesn't feel like anything I've done. Amen. It just feels like a cotton picking miracle that um, I'm still married. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> what did you say? Anything less than death. <laughs> exactly. It's mercy, right? It's mercy, you know. Um, uh, and who would have thought that God would take our worst? and flip it, turn it, tweak it, <laughs> you know, um, uh, put some Holy Ghost uh, oil on it, <laughs> and, and then use it to further his kingdom. That, you know, there are countless men and women and couples who are moving forward with hope, you know, as a result. It's really incredible. Yeah, and to me, as I always say, you only get to God through failure. And um, I always think, you know, God's physical address, it's at the end of my rope. <laughs> that's only where I found him was at the end of my rope. Oh, man. Yeah. I remember first hearing, hearing some of those things that you say and just like, wow. That's, it's, those are life-changing moments and statements. You know, and then um, to, now to be able to use music. Oh, yeah. You know, to, um, uh, and I know that you are a musician. You know, you actually play the guitar. Um, and for whatever reason, you didn't bring your guitar today. Yeah, I wish I, it hit me later, thought, oh, I forgot my guitar. But you know, it's really funny. Music can be an instrument that is phenomenal, and it can also, I mean, it is such a powerful tool. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, my infidelity was um, partially spurred by music in mm -hmm. the sense that I was performing with the other person, mm -hmm. and there Whoa. is a strong connection that can happen through music. And so that was the thing that we shared in common. Wow. And for a long time, Stephanie was not that fond of my guitar. I actually thought, I put it up in a case and thought, well, my best friend is going to be in a case for the rest of my life. Mm. But she did allow me to uh, start leading worship. So that didn't bother her. I don't know that okay. she was interested in me doing anything else. Gotcha. <laughs> Especially performing with anyone else. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that the music really does something to us 
really positive, mm -hmm. but that can also be a good or a bad tool. Right, right, depending on the context and exactly how, that's, right. how that's being used, you know. So why Songs for the Soul? Why did you want to incorporate this aspect, this musical aspect, into a fair recovery? With music in particular, well, there are a couple of things. I haven't figured out how to incorporate the next thing in yet, but with music in particular, what happens? I mean, historically, one of the ways that we as human beings have forged relationships has been through music. It's been oftentimes through church, but even through bars and taverns historically, people singing together. Actually, it, it creates a micro-resonance of positivity, of connection. It, it tunes the vagal nerve, and it's something that allows us to feel, again, a connection with another person. Music connects us. Wow. Wow. Incredible. Um, when I think about, when you first came up with the idea, hey, I want you all to do this. <laughs> I, can't find the, I can't find the words to put to the joy and the privilege and the honor of being able to use music for healing purposes. That, you know, really it can somehow reach people where they are. Right. And, um, uh, and be a channel, a vessel of God's healing. That's, it's mind-boggling. Even more about it, if you think about it, it's not just connection. I mean, to me, rhythm and beat mm -hmm. and music it, it takes us back to something very primal. It's almost like a mother's heartbeat. You get that thing going. And it's mm. traditionally in the healing of trauma, uh, drums and beat, rhythm, have always been one of the primary pillars of healing. Mm. So I think it's critical that we begin to incorporate that. Amazing. Um, dream a little bit here as it relates to music and our listeners incorporating music more into their lives. How can that music um, help maybe with triggers or with reminders or, or things of that sort? I believe that when you're listening to songs that reach you in terms of they they literally lyrics or rhythms or tunes. They, I think they soothe, they do soothe the ner nervous system. And I've had so many people tell me through the day, for instance, they'll listen to music, they'll listen to worship music. And as they do that, it allows them to stay focused in the moment rather than being carried away wow. by those traumatic responses. Part of the problem with trauma is that this part of the brain, the part that's been traumatized, it's been rewired to believe you're always in living in a very dangerous situation. Even more, this part of the brain is incapable of telling time. So it can feel today like the same thing is still happening, even though it may be two years ago. Mm -hmm. But with music, that soothing, it gets you in the moment, it gets you focused on something different. It allows you not to escape, but to be present. It, hmm. It's it's hitting a, a positive aspect. I guess you could listen to music that might go the other direction. Right, right, I mean, right. Uh, but in general, most people listen to music that really soothes and um, it, when we talk about it, it soothes the soul. I mean, think about it in um, Second Kings, when David is playing I his heart right, for Saul, yeah. what's he doing? It's he's literally was helping a man that was being tortured find peace. <laughs> That's so beautiful. You know, you've heard me talk about this, you know, because we have our staff Bible studies. I'm privileged now to be on staff now going on uh, three years or so. Um, Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing ooh, one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And I love the message of that, that it says that we literally can take the message of Christ. Right. 
and connect that musically and use that for teaching and warning, you know. Um, I think about, you know, as it relates to living a life of purity and, and you know, I mean, we, we really could have our own catalog mm -hmm. of music that deals with, because we have, we have the songs that deal with cheating. Right. <laughs> you got those down, right? <laughs> you got a lot of those, got a lot of those. Um, uh, but we really could use a library of songs that deals with um, helping to teach people um, what it means to walk in purity and love our wives and uh, our, um, uh, you know, the, all, the, all that the scripture teaches us as a relationship. We can use music to carry that message. Um, uh, and I think it's just so powerful. It is so, so powerful. Right, and I think that what you just did was a scripture song. And yeah. to me, songs in scripture, it also gets it kind of, it's an easier way to, to remember scripture. Yeah. And, you know, that's important to me. It may not be important to everyone, yeah. but like Psalm 133, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. Come on, Rick. Like press all upon the beard. Falling down upon the beard of Aaron, on and on. There's just so many things we can learn easily through music. Ah, <laughs> I love it. That's wonderful. Yeah, I love that. When the Bible talks about writing the Word of God on the tablets of our heart, mm -hmm. that singing um, God's Word in the book of Psalms, Oh it's yeah, an so many. It, was all, it was music. You know, it's it's so huge, and I love that even in Colossians uh, three and then Ephesians five, where it talks about psalms, hymns, and, and spiritual, spiritual songs. songs. You know, it's it's. I feel like it's it's something that we really really could tap into, and I pray that you know that this grows, and you know, long after me and Angie are gone home to be with Glory, that there's somebody that's still doing songs for the soul, that's, that's focusing in on the community of people who are in crisis and hurt and really, really wanting the healing of God. And, and I don't know if it always impacts other people like it impacts me, but as I listen to music or as I listen to songs for the soul, it literally is transcendent to me in a lot of ways. It just gets me in a completely different state. It pulls me out of where I'm at in the moment. And I'm just fascinated. Even if I'm just listening to music that Alexa's playing or, mm -hmm. you know, Siri's playing, music transforms. Wow. It's huge. One of the things it does is, as you know, uh, well, there were, there are two things that I've really been thinking about that forge connection. And mm -hmm. the person has to be safe, obviously. Mm -hmm. But if, if there's always this element with music, a little bit of risk, singing back and forth. As you know, we yes. actually, um, over the weekends, we began experimenting with having uh, different groups sing back and forth to each other. And one of the and things- And the reports have been amazing. It's just been, it, I, you know, when I first said, let's do this, I just called Rodney up and I said, hey, I need a song and called Emily. I got three of us on the phone. We need a song and like for tomorrow. And right. it was like, what am I impulsive kind of let's, let's do this. You know, it, Forget your meeting that you're supposed to be in right now. Exactly. Come on, it's come right. on, let's Excuse do me. this. And then John's over there, oh, they're going to hate that, you know. <laughs> and then when we do it, you know, everybody's crying, they're hugging, and I'm going, wow. Who would have thought? But it's that singing back and forth is a strong connection. Mm. I mean, part of what made me think about it was in Italy during COVID, you know, people would get on the balconies and they'd sing back and forth to each other as really? they connected. I'd heard that, that. I'd heard that. Yeah. And the other uh, traditionally ways that people forge connection is through dance. And I just hadn't figured out how to incorporate dance yet, but my mind's spinning on it. I think maybe there's a way to help people get back together through dance also. Mm. And music, dance, I mean, you may have heard. I could see heard. that, I could see that. Lately, you know, there actually, there's kind of a movement where people are going to bars and singing. Hmm. Because if they're not going to churches, it gives them an outlet where they can still sing and connect. It leaves you feeling connected. Wow, and think about it from a couple standpoint. Mm -hmm. 
um, what it could mean for that couple to dance again? I think that it could mean a lot. It's scary. And, and that's part of the risk of forging risk. connection. Yeah. It's the risk. And will the other person reciprocate? Mm. Will they, even if, you know, we think about the first time you ever held hands with your mate, you kind mm. of reach, are they going to respond or are they going to kill me? If I sing to you, will you sing back? Mm. Uh, will people judge me? I always tell people in the group that if you have a really lousy voice, you have to know, if you can't carry a tune in a bucket like my dad, you have to know that it means far more because the risk is bigger. Mm. And so it's not that it's yes, like less meaningful. It actually is far more meaningful when somebody who can't sing well or they believe they can't sing well right, right. does it. It just is a, is a bigger connection. It's a huge expression of your heart. It's, it's taking that risk. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, that's, that's, that's so incredible. I know we can't hold your time uh, too long. I know you got another appointment in a few moments. Uh, but um, final thoughts, final words. And then after uh, Rick shares whatever his final thoughts, words, or prayer, whatever is on your heart, you know, we're going to go into uh, do a, one of those old favorite hymns, His Eye is on the Sparrow, that uh, Angie and I are going to sing uh, for you. But before we do that, you know, anything on your heart? Any last words, final words, prayer, anything as it relates to music or how we can pray for you, anything? I think that I would encourage anybody who's on this process of healing, don't forget the power of music in your healing process. Listen to songs for the soul. Listen to other things that are, that when you hear them, it just feels alive to you. I just had a thought about a couple, first time I've tried this with a couple, I said, I want you to sing to each other. Mm. And they were kind of looking at each other and he said, okay. And he said, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. And I thought, mm. what a choice for a song. And of course, she's, oh, oh yeah, right. Yeah. You know, and, and she sang back. Mm. And both of them at that moment, just that one piece. And I just wonder how you would get couples to sing that to each other in the morning to start the day. Mm or something like that. I mean, to me, it's just that important. It's intimacy. It is intimacy right there. Beautiful. Rick, we love you. Love you too, Thank Bobby. you. Thank you so much. And I know that the people here who are, their lives are being turned around um, by the grace of God. All, you know, as a staff, we always hear people say, I just want to tell um, Rick how the Lord used him in my life. And so, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Songs for the soul. Listen to us um, as this song we're about to do. I hope Angie's getting ready, because we're about I to do, do. <laughs> His Eye is on the Sparrow. God bless. <laughs>